Let me know. Okay, I think we're live. Uh, hopefully the audio is coming through and the video is coming through. If it's not, if you can't hear me, if my lips are just moving, uh, please let me know in the chat um, that you can't hear. So uh, welcome to this intermittent fasting Q&A live. My name is Kayla Cox. I am the owner of this channel, Six Miles to Supper. The name Six Miles to Supper pretty much sums up how I lost weight. I was obese. Uh, and I lost down to a healthy BMI, and I did that mainly by uh, walking six miles a day and eating once a day. Uh, my my meal was OMAD. Uh, sorry, <laughs> my meal was supper. Uh, OMAD stands for one meal a day, so that's what I would do. And so I've written a book about it called The Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting. I also wrote an additional book called uh, overcoming weight loss obstacles, which is all about the harder parts of the weight loss journey, uh, the mindset stuff and, you know, what to do during plateaus and everything. So, uh, right now, if you have a question, uh, please put it in the chat and I will, uh, get around to answering it. Uh, you can also visit my website, six miles to And, uh, there's lots of information there about intermittent fasting. Uh, my husband is in the chat as six miles to supper, moderating everything and, uh, getting questions over here to me. So, uh, and thank you, Jay, for doing that. So, uh, with that, uh, there was already a form that I posted on the community tab where people could submit questions. So I'll go ahead and start with those as people get in here. So, uh, the, how did you leave no limitations on food and food types, but still ensure you stayed in your calorie range? So I think that's a great question because a lot of times, uh, and I was certainly this way, uh, probably my whole life, really, I had it in my head, like, you, you can't just eat whatever you want. You, you have to, like, eliminate food groups a lot of times or eliminate certain kinds of foods in order to lose weight. But that never worked for me over the long term. I always went back to eating those foods, which would then mess me up because then I would just, you know, like, I, it was like I had no self-control around those foods. So... This last time that I, that I lost weight, so like in 2014, I said, okay, I, I've got to get my weight under control. I was obese at the time. And, um, and so I decided I was going to change like how I thought about everything. I thought I've got to figure this out so that I can do this for the rest of my life. Like no more saying I'm never going to eat cake again because I'm going to eat cake. Right. And so, uh, so during that course of time, like from like 2014, 2015, uh, I, I learned about intermittent fasting at the end, and in 2015, I, I really, like, I was not consistent. I would do intermittent fasting some, and then I would quit, and then I would, you know, go on to something else, and one thing I did was I would uh, counting calories, and so what I started to notice was, like, you know, well, it was really frustrating to me, first of all, to try to count calories, because I was using my Fitbit as, like, the... Uh, the thing that was telling me how many calories I was burning. And I was also like using the Fitbit app to log all of my food. And, uh, and so even though I was trying to like be in my calorie deficit and all that, I wasn't losing weight. Now, a couple of things go with that. Like, I don't know back then I was really in a hurry. I was really in a big hurry to lose the weight. So I didn't give myself weeks and weeks of like experimentation and saying, okay, I'm going to stick with this for like six weeks, you know, being on this certain kind of, uh, you know, regimen or whatever. Uh, I was just in a hurry. And so I quit a lot. It wasn't consistent. So it's hard to know. But one thing I do know is that counting calories drove me crazy because I just felt so restricted by everything. It was like so disheartening. Like you get the little Chick-fil-A cup of uh, Chick-fil-A sauce and then it, it's like so many calories and then it, it was just like I couldn't enjoy food. So so I kind of flipped. I said, okay, instead of paying attention to calories, I'm going to pay attention to how full I'm feeling. So uh, because I just I got fed up with counting calories and so like I think that was October of 2015, uh, I said, I'm not counting calories anymore. And I'm just going to eat whatever foods I want and I'm going to stop when I feel. And, um, and I haven't counted calories since then. And so uh, I'm still able to lose weight. So the point is, to me, a calorie is a calorie. And so when you don't have limitations on the types of foods, so in other words, I let myself eat 
whatever I want to eat. So if that's cookies, I'll eat cookies. If it's protein, I'll eat protein or, you know, whatever it is, I just eat it. And I, and I don't try to tell myself like, you've got to take it easy on this. And by doing that, it helped me to gain just this self-control around food. Like it took away all the, I don't know, like mental games or something, I guess, uh, that, that go on. And, uh, so it fell out really well. Um, but again, you know, I think it's one of those things that it can become this kind of self-limiting belief. Like if you think I will gain weight if I eat that thing, then like because it's become this thing, like you think I'm going to gain weight, then you kind of do because you just can't. It's like there's too many head games that you play with yourself, or at least that was the case with me. So, uh, so okay, so hopefully that answers your question. Oh, well, okay, and to ensure that I stayed in my calorie range, so basically what I told myself is I'm going to look at the scale. What is the scale doing? The scale will tell me the truth. Uh, what I found was the Fitbit, I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't know why, you know, like I, it looked like I was in a deficit, but it wasn't, you know, losing or I was just losing really slowly. Um, probably that was more the, the case. Like I was just losing really slowly, but, but certainly not, not as quickly as I would have, that it, not as quickly as I thought I should have been losing based on the deficit that it told me I was in, if that makes sense. But, um, but the, the scale told me, okay, you're in the right calorie range because the scale's moving down, which is what I wanted it to do. Okay, so the next um, question uh, is, uh, hello, I've been doing intermittent fasting and OMAD on and off for about two months now and have been feeling and looking better every day, but now I'm going to do intermittent fasting as my lifestyle uh, to help me finish losing weight and maintain it for the learning. How often I should allow myself to eat dessert after dinner during my plan while I continue to lose weight. I don't want to restrict myself, but I also don't want to gain weight. Do you have any tips? Thanks for your help. Well, here's what I did and I, and it worked for me. And like I said, it was this type of thinking that helped me to gain control around food. It's not how I planned it really, but um, it is what worked for me. So I didn't make a rule for myself about how often I could have dessert. I think it's a kind of a quirk of my personality that if I said, one dessert a week, I'd want two. And if I said two, I'd want three. I mean, it's just how I'm built. So, but by saying whenever you want it, it was like, I mean, occasionally I might crave dessert, you know, but I really don't anymore. And it's just the weirdest thing. And I think it does go back to, because I have that complete freedom, I can choose however much I want it. I just don't want it that often. And it's really weird, but that's how it worked for me. Um, and so I think you have to know yourself well. Like some people do really well with that to say, okay, once a week, like that makes them feel good and, and it like works for them. But there's people like me who it just, it just kind of backfires. So I think know yourself well. Uh, and also, you know, you can experiment, you can play with it. And I think that is, you know, a really big part of weight loss is just experiment and find what works for you. Um, you know, you could try saying to yourself, you know, okay, once a week. And how does that work for you? Like, are you feeling deprived? Are you feeling like, ah, I really want it two, weeks, two times a week now? Or, or are you doing really well with that? It's like, oh yes, I love having that one dessert a week. It like gives me, maybe you appreciate it more, right? Like that's, uh, that's something that happens. You really appreciate the dessert once a week. If you eat it more than once a week, maybe you don't enjoy it as much. So, uh, so there you go. Okay. Next question. Uh, Let's see, I've just started OMAD one weekend. I suppose my question is centered around, centered around alcohol. How do you and others feel about having alcohol during your eating window? Do you find it prevents you from losing weight or does it knock you off your plan? And that's from Ronan. Well, Ronan, that's a great question. Um, and I can't speak for other people. I don't really watch any other uh, intermittent fasting channels or anything like that. I just stay focused on like what I'm doing in my own life. And um, it kind of drives me crazy. <laughs> I've, I've, I've tried a couple of different times to watch different videos and it just, it, I, I start to overthink things. So, um, so alcohol, my, my attitude about alcohol has always been, I will, I will drink it when I want it. Like I had no rules about like only once a week or, you know, only one uh, glass. I will say I'm a lightweight <laughs> when it comes to like uh, alcohol, I can have a glass of wine and I am I, like, that's enough <laughs> like because I get, I can get tipsy just from that. So, um, and especially, so one thing about OMAD is, uh, being in that fasted state, 
uh, you have to, I mean, for me, I have to be careful of that because uh, if you've been fasting for basically 24 hours and then you just start to have your wine uh, before you've had any food on your stomach, I mean, it, it can like really, it kind of knocks me a little bit for a loop. So I, I tend to, if I'm going to have a glass of wine, generally speaking, I'll eat eat some and, and start to drink with the meal instead of having like a whole glass before. Um, a couple of things with that though. So alcohol, one thing is it can, and this is just in my own experience, it can lead to overeating. Like what I noticed was what can happen is you're just not paying attention. And like, so I, I was in the habit of eating fast like that was just like ever I, I as far as I can remember I've been a fast eater and I'm and I'm getting better like I'm, I still am actively working on eating more slowly enjoying the food more I feel like I'll always uh, probably have work to do on that but alcohol is like a disinhibitor it just made me eat or it could tend to make me eat even faster so what I would start to see sometimes is like I would if I wasn't paying attention I would end up feeling way overly full after a meal with wine. So I learned, okay, well, I need to be more careful about that, which meant slowing down, slowing down also, you know, as I'm drinking the wine, but also slowing down the food and just being more aware of that. Just saying, okay, I'm going to remind myself uh, when I have wine, I tend to want to eat a little faster or at least even if it's not eating faster, it's maybe continuing to eat after the feelings of fullness start. So, uh, and then another thing on alcohol is, uh, what I noticed about myself was if I had on its own, like right before bed. So in other words, maybe we had a meal, had my OMAD and then, uh, went to bed or right before bed, my husband and I would have a glass of wine. And my rule for that was, uh, I will have the glass of wine. If he asked me to have a glass of wine before, uh, bed, I, I will totally do that. So, um, what I noticed though, is if I had wine with no food right before bed, I tended to feel some nausea the next day, just, just a little bit, but it was like, mm, not pleasant. I don't like to feel nauseous ever. So, um, and this kind of started to like, uh, just what was going on. I was in maintenance. So what I would do is if I was going to have wine, I would have cheese with it, um, just to give me like a little, I don't know, a little bit of protein or something. And it seemed to the next day make it so that I wasn't, I didn't have that little hint of nausea. So, so there you go. Uh, uh, Elizabeth, uh, what's the number one tip you would give to someone just getting started? So Elizabeth's my daughter's name. So, um, you have a nice name. Okay. So number one tip, for someone who's just getting started, I would, like, I, you didn't say with weight loss or with, so I'll just take it, well, it's really kind of the same. I would say be patient. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with the process. Don't be in a hurry because I found when I hurried, that's when I made mistakes. That's when I didn't have good progress. When I finally slowed myself down and got okay mentally with this is going to take a long time and this is a lot more about changing my my whole life uh my whole lifestyle than it is just about trying to figure out how to to drop a few pounds like i had a lot of bad habits i had the habit of being uh sedentary i had the habit of overeating i had the habit. Uh, there were all these things that i was doing that were not good that it took a long time to get out of those habits and to change to better ones so and it takes a lot of patience so being patient with yourself, which a part of that is also uh, not being a perfectionist anymore. That was something that I've really had to work on. I used to have this like all or nothing mentality. So either I'm on the plan 100% of the time and I've got to be perfect on it, but that like one time I mess up, then the plan's out the window. I had to get okay with things aren't going to be perfect because this is about for the rest of my life, keeping the weight off. So there are going to be times where I'm going to mess up I'm, you know, the weight will fluctuate. I've got to get okay with that and I got to just stick with it. So yeah, so I would say patience, 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 patience. That's really, really important. Uh, Happy Jacks, good morning. Well, good morning to you too. Uh, what made you choose six miles? Okay, so there are a couple of different factors. One factor that I remember clearly is there was this article that said um, this celebrity trainer, because I used to look at articles like that all the time. 
back in the day, uh, she said, uh, I make all of my clients move three miles a day and, uh, and that will, you know, keep them at a good weight basically. And so I thought to myself, cause I was convinced back then, like I have, so I thought I have to double it. I have to double it. And, uh, if I double that, then there's no way that I could basically remain obese. You know, if I'm moving six miles a day, that's gotta, you know, bring the weight off of me. Um, and so, uh, that was one part of it, but the other part also was, um, so I injured my back doing a deadlift and that was like in, I think July, July of 2015. And so I had to figure out like, okay, I got to do some sort of exercise. And at that point, walking was like the only thing that didn't hurt. I tried a couple of different times as I healed to go back to lifting heavy, but it just wasn't working. I'm going to try to do walking. And I, I got consistent. I got really consistent with it. And I was trying to come up with like the right goal, like the, the right daily step goal. And, um, 10,000, I was at 10,000 and then I pushed it up to 12,000 steps. And I was like, Hey, this feels pretty good. And I think at that point I looked at my Fitbit about the, the distance and it was like really close to like six miles. Like I thought, okay, I'll bump it up to six miles. Six miles was 14,000 steps and six miles. There's just something about it for me that said, Hey, that's an accomplishment every day. Like I could tell that it would be motivating to me to, to do that. Like uh, it, it, I just, I thought it's challenging enough, but not, not too much of a challenge where it's like, I'm not going to be able to do that on a consistent basis. And so that's how I picked it. I thought, okay, six miles a day, that works. And, and I, and, and, and I told myself like, okay, I'm going to commit to it. And I'm going to see how this works for, you know, like, I think I said in my mind, probably like two months. And, um, I started to say like, yes, I can do this. And once I started to see that, yes, I can get this in, it takes effort of reconfiguring my day. And yes, it means sometimes I'm like, in the early days, I was like getting my last steps um, at midnight because I would procrastinate all day long. So, um, so yeah, so that's how I came to six miles. Uh, Carmen, your book was life changing. Well, thank you. I'm so glad, uh, that it was helpful to you. Um, it makes me glad that I wrote it. So, um, uh, Lori, you know, really, uh, you're, you're the one who should get the thanks for changing your own life because ultimately that's, that's the key you gotta take action, right? So, so congratulations for changing your life. Um, Lori Storfer, hi from Florida. Well, I'm in Florida too. Um, how do you get past the hunger? Uh, is there a mantra you say the morning hunger I can deal with is the hunger after, Oh, after the window cl uh, closes, that gets me crazy. So that's interesting. Um, so how do you get past the hunger? So that's a good question because in the beginning for me, it was like I, I almost kind of felt panicky when I would feel the hunger. I think because I had it rammed in my head for so many years. Like, uh, if you feel hunger, that means like your metabolism is slowing down. And, and I was just thinking, oh no, if I feel hunger, then that means that my metabolism's slowing down. I'm actually going to gain weight. So, um, so I had to kind of get it into my head. That's really not true that uh, for at least, uh, and at least in my experience, that is not true. Like feeling that little bit of hunger is kind of a signal, like your body is saying, okay, if you don't feed me, I'm going to have to like use my own resources here. And, um, and so that's what it does. So that's one thing I started to do was kind of to tell myself, okay, feeling that little bit of hunger says I'm on the right track because I'm not, I'm not eating enough to, uh, actually maintain my weight loss. Like my body's going to have to burn its own resources in order to keep going. So, so that's one thing. Um, looking at that little bit of hunger differently. Now I, I want to, because you know, I, I don't, there may be people out there who are going too far in that direction, like starving themselves. That's not good. Like you have to kind of say a little bit of hunger is good too much hunger because then you're going to start feeling bad. If you're not eating enough to like function, then you really will start to be like, Oh, I, I don't feel like moving around. Like there's like this fine line where you want to be just a little hungry. You want to have plenty of energy and it, it's kind of a fine line to walk, but uh, you don't want to do anything unhealthy. So, uh, kind of reframing 
what I thought about that initial kind of hunger. The next thing is dealing, I mean, because a lot of times I found for me, hunger, that feeling of hunger was uh, stress. Like I would, you know, I would be, I would, I would have been fasting, like in the routine of fasting, right? Just like, okay, uh, certainly in the morning time, I wouldn't be eating just on a consistent basis. But then all of a sudden, you know, one day I would just find myself in, you know, looking through the pantry. It's like 10 o'clock in the morning. Like, what am I doing? And I would realize like, oh, I'm, cause that's why I'm standing here. But then when I would kind of work backwards, like, why did I start feeling hungry right now? Because I knew about myself that on normal, regular days, my body adjusts pretty quickly to that window. Like, okay, I'm, I'm not eating right now, so I don't expect food until whatever time. You know, like when, when I would be eating, let's say from two to six, like I don't get hungry until two really. So what's going on at 10 o'clock? Like what just happened? And what I found was a lot of times it was just, I got stressed out about something. I mean, you know, the kids misbehaved or uh, the budget meeting, we just had a budget meeting and like, oh, it's not looking great. My husband <laughs> uh, was like at that point, uh, he was in real estate, so that's straight commission job. So, you know, sometimes the budget would stress me out. Like, oh no, we don't, <laughs> there's no money coming in this month. So then I would, you know, and it's your body is trying to like comfort itself and say, okay, well just let's have some food and calm down. And, and it does happen. I mean, as far as if you are feeling stressed out and you eat food, you usually do like feel less stressed. I mean, it, it is a biological thing that happens and it's a very powerful thing to overcome. And so how I overcame it, well, first of all, it's just being real, real stubborn and committed. So in other words, like not going to eat right now, I would just tell myself, no, like, no, you're not eating. So let's do something else. A lot of times it was in the early days, I would just start walking. I would just say, okay, look, yeah, you're hungry but you got to get your steps in anyway. So let's get your steps in. Um, and that would help usually because I would start to think and, uh, be more proactive and like, there's just something about getting up and walking around that really helps me. So it was like the hunger would kind of fade because I'm doing something and thinking of it. Uh, later on, I started to really deal with the things that were stressing me out. So like, you know, being proactive, don't just sit there and feel helpless. Like say, okay, this is the reality, so this is what we need to do. Like if it was, uh, you know, a budget thing, it was like, okay, now we got to increase the income somehow. So what do we do? Like I would do like uh, usability testing and things. Um, and so just learning how to take action on those things that were stressing me out started to eliminate that hunger. Um, now another kind of thing that would happen. So I wasn't always stress eating. Sometimes what I would find is I would get hungry because I didn't eat enough. The, the day before. So especially when I was going to OMAD, that was kind of a tricky thing. Like, how do I eat just enough, enough so that I feel full until supper the next day, but not too, uh, and not, not enough food because I wouldn't sleep well and next day. So um, what I found with that, the best, because I wanted to stay on, on schedule, like I didn't want to just, you know, start to be inconsistent. So what I would usually do with that was I would just, um, not eat and stay busy. So just be really productive that day. Uh, you know, it, certainly getting my walks in and stuff were uh, helpful, but also just stay busy, read a book, you know, learn a new, I, I learned uh, American Sign Language, uh, or I'm still learning that, but uh, just doing things to keep my, my mind active, anything other than eating, basically just filling up my life with things other than food. So uh, let's see. Uh, Yvonne asks, does smoking hinder progress during intermittent fasting? You know, I'm not a smoker. My dad is. Um, but I would say, uh, I don't see why it would, uh, because to me really, uh, like intermittent fasting, it just is, a, it's a way to cut calories. Um, and ultimately that's what it comes down to. So, I mean, you know, smoking, uh, doesn't have any calories to my knowledge at least. Um, so I, I don't think that it would, um, but you know, I think some things to explore might be, um, if, if you're having trouble, like if you're, if you're doing intermittent fasting and it's just not working, uh, look at your stress levels, look and see if, uh, like snacking to, to me or in my experience, snacking was directly tied to emotional eating. So just, 
you know, maybe there's something there, you know, um, uh, are you, how are you feeling after your actual meals? Are you feeling overly full? Are you, are you eating just the right amount? Um, and just play, play with it until you, until you start getting results. So, um, and okay. You also asked, could you please recommend some OMAD plans? Well, to me, it's like the simplest plan in the world is just eat one meal a day and just go ahead and eat whatever you normally eat. Like I don't have any kind of plan as far as like, like I eat this on this day and this on this day and this on this day. No, like my, my plan has always been whatever my family is eating. So that meant with meat sauce, that meant, uh, chicken tenders with fries or, you know, lasagna or, uh, biscuits and gravy or, you know, like, uh, man pleasing chicken with roasted broccoli or beans and rice. I mean, it's all the food. And really, OMAD really is as simple as you eat one meal a day. You just sit down, you eat your food, and you get up and you start fasting again. And you just have one meal a day. Um, there's, like, there's no need to overthink it. It's really that simple. And um, yeah, so I mean, the thing, about it, uh, the thing about OMAD is going straight to OMAD is for most people, some people do it with, with no problem. I didn't do it this way. Some people go straight to OMAD. Like they, they're just, they woke up one morning, heard about OMAD and they just get on OMAD. But I went very, 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 very gradually just pushing my fasting window out further and further until eventually I got to one meal a day. So, uh, so there you go. So I would say just don't overcomplicate it. So many people make it complicated. Like they want a meal plan and everything. It's like, just eat whatever you're eating. Cause for one, you know, you like that stuff, right? Like that, I think that's another part of weight loss. It's like, sometimes you're trying to force yourself to eat food you hate. I just don't see how that's, well, it was never, I will say this, it was never sustainable for me over the long term. It just wasn't. So, uh, uh, Carmen, love the simplicity and flexibility of the plan and yet uh, also has very clear boundaries. Yeah, boundaries with food really is what it comes down to a lot of times. It's just having, I mean, and so, with intermittent fasting, it's just a time boundary around food. Um, you know, a lot of people who practice intermittent fasting, they don't have other kinds of boundaries as far as like, there's no like, oh, you gotta eliminate this whole food group or anything. It's just time boundary. And um, so there you go. Uh, Vaughn, body get used to the OMAD and then go into starvation mode, reduce metabolic rate. Hasn't for me, I practice in, uh, I've practiced intermittent fasting like I said, I started inconsistently in 2015. I was always worried, like, that was actually my big, big worry in the beginning. When I first heard about it, I thought, oh no, that'll wreck your metabolism. Like, that'll be just ridiculously hard and um, it'll be bad. It'll be bad for my body. And I had also read an article that said women shouldn't fast longer than 14 hours. So I was really scared to do anything longer than that. And so it kept me waffling. It just kept me like, I can't, I can't commit to it. Cause I, it, it was like, I just, I didn't, I was, I was really worried about the metabolism thing. So I told myself, you know, uh, I'm just going to try it. And instead of being worried about the metabolic thing, I'm just gonna, if I, if I see that like, oh, suddenly my metabolism is horrible, then I'll stop. Um, but so in 2016, that's when I got very consistent. I said, okay, it's uh, intermittent fasting. At that point, I was like at a 16, 8, 18, 6. And uh, at the beginning of the year, by April, I went down to OMAD. And that was the year I lost the bulk of my weight. Um, and I'm a slow loser, like uh, a pound a week on average is what I lost, even, even on OMAD. Um, and so maybe I start started with a slow metabolism, but I really don't think it has changed at all. I mean, as far as I can tell, I feel much better nowadays, like feel much more energy. Uh, like when I was uh, obese, a lot of times I was cold all the time, but now I'm, you know, nice and warm, but <laughs> I sweat <laughs> a lot. Uh, so so I, I tested. And uh, I think if it's something you're worried about, you should certainly do it. Uh, Jason Fung, um, he has, he's a doctor, so he'd be a better, better person to ask. Uh, he has some stuff about uh, metabolism and intermittent fasting and, and things. And I've, I've read, you know, as much as I can on it. And to me, it doesn't seem like there's really a problem there. Uh, but, and so, so I practiced, so I practiced OMAD um, 
from, you know, in 2016, 2017, when I'm just maintaining, I was doing a lot of, you know, like sometimes I'd do OMAD, sometimes I, I would do like a 16-8. Uh, I would just really, I was really loose with my plan because I was just wanting to maintain. Then 2018, I did OMAD, uh, or end of 2017 through like October 2018, I was back to OMAD. Again, you know, I didn't notice any uh, kinds of ill effects from it. Uh, nowadays, uh, sometimes I'll do OMAD pretty consistently, uh, but again, because I'm just trying to maintain at this point, uh, and then other times I'll kind of do like a more of an eating window type thing. It really depends on what's going on in my life as far as what I do. Uh, when I really need to be productive, and if I've got a lot of kind of chaos going on in my life, uh, then I like my OMAD plan. Just like, just let's just do OMAD, keep it really simple, gives me lots of time to work and stuff. When I have more, uh, you know, like when there's everything else is kind of more orderly, then I like to have a bit more chaos in my, my eating plan. So that's just what I like. Um, let's see. So do you recommend changing the fasting and feeding hours? I don't because, um, for me that always made it way too confusing. Like when I was doing a window, I just kept it the same every day. So in other words, uh, like if I was doing a, let's say like a 16, uh, eight, uh, just to make it easy. So that's eight hour eating window. I would just say, okay, from 12 to eight every day, that's my eating window. I don't do the recalculation thing because I can't hardly keep track of what day it is. <laughs> so like trying to keep up with what hours I ate the day before and then trying to do the calculations, it was just, that was too complicated for me. So I just said, okay, this is what I, these are my hours that I eat. And I just kept it the same all the time. That was just what could keep me consistent. But you know, if you're the type of person who prefers that kind of like, I like to calculate, you know, the, the, the fasting went on. I like to change things up because otherwise it feels too boring. Well then change it up. Like there, there's a lot of perfectly good ways to do it. Actually, my brother-in-law, he, tra uh, and so what he found for himself when he was starting to practice intermittent fasting was trying to keep it at the same time every day was just impossible because of his travel schedule, because he was like going through different time zones, also having to meet with families and, and eat with them and everything. Uh, and, and you can watch his, I did an, a success story interview with him. I, oh gosh, it's been probably a couple of years ago. You anyway, know, his name is Roger. Uh, maybe Jay can link to it in the chat, but, uh, so he had to just kind of figure it out like for himself. And some days he would do a long, you know, fast. Sometimes he does like multiple day fast. Other times he has a really short, uh, eating window and it, it, he just has to change it up all the time because that's his life and it worked for him. So so I'd say, you know, just uh, experiment for yourself and see what works. Uh, let's see. Uh, Yvonne, you also asked, I've uh, been on OMAD since the past five days, but my daughter says I don't eat enough. Well, yeah, I know. Like, that is something I think a lot of people, they get, you know, and especially people who love you are going to be kind of like, whoa, you know, th this is maybe too little. And um, here, here's you know, I think this is important. First of all, always know like how, how much do you weigh and do you actually need to lose weight? Because there is a thing called body dysmorphia, which is where a person who is a good healthy weight looks in the mirror and sees a fat person. And, uh, and, and, and because of that, they will starve themselves. And, and being underweight is just as dangerous as being um, obese, uh, actually a little bit more so. So according to the research I've done. So, so my point is like, I, I, the, the thing that I don't want to basically be like is like, oh, it's, uh, you know, like not listen to them. You have to, and be able to discern, like, are they saying something that's true? Because, you know, sometimes people will say like, oh, I've got to really lose, you know, however many pounds and I'll look at them and think you're already skinny, you know, like, so. So I just want to caution you, like, you know, like know what your BMI is and, you know, and I think that's a pretty good indication. And yes, people will say, well, that's not perfect. Nothing's perfect. Like, I think it just gives you a nice range and it can tell you, are you in a good range? Are you in a healthy range? Are you obese? Are you overweight? Are you a normal weight? Or are you underweight? And if you're underweight, then you don't need to lose weight. Um, and really, if you're a normal weight, I would say you probably don't need to lose weight. But once you get into, you know, overweight and obese, I think for me, at least my experience was, 
uh, certainly when I was in that obese range, man, it was, I was kind of miserable. Like as far as like physically, I was tired, you know, I just didn't feel like I could move around, uh, in my, in my own body the way I wanted to. By the time I got into the, it was like, okay, I can tell kind of a difference. Once I started getting down in the very low overweight range to normal, that's when I started feeling normal. And I don't think it was just because like, oh, well, this, the BMI scale is telling me I'm normal. I think it was just like, Yes, I, my body feels good here. I can move and I can keep up with everyone. And like going to the store doesn't feel like this taxing thing. I mean, I still don't like to shop, but like walking across the parking lot, no big deal nowadays. So uh, there you go. Um, let's see. Uh, Happy Jacks. I started walking because of this channel. Oh, uh, not to be one up. Oh, no, you do seven miles a day. Well, now I've got to start doing eight. <laughs> And I gotta change the name of this channel and my website. It'll just be horrible. Um, hey, and you've lost. So you've gone from 350 to 206 in a year and a half. Typo, or is that for real? That is that is awesome. That wow, that is um, man, congratulations. That is that is changing your life. That is that is great. Man, that's great. Um, wow. Well, congratulations. That is that man, that is that's good. Um, okay, uh, Yvonne, does intermittent fasting work alone or is exercise like walking or going to the gym absolutely necessary to see progress uh, with you know, weight loss? So that is a great question and people have lots of strong opinions about this. And okay, so first of all, I've talked to lots of people who uh, lost a lot of weight with no exercise at all. And I know that, that like puts some people up in arms, but it's true. It's like some people just get their eating under control, and and really it is about cal. Again, I think it's about calories in, calories out. Calories down where they need to be. Then extra exercising just isn't necessary per se. However, in my own journey, I think that the walking was very important. Like I don't think it was important for the calorie burn. I just don't because I really do. I, I believe, and I mean, based on my own um, uh, just observation of myself, uh, my appetite increases as my activity level increases, okay? So it's like, it, it kind of cancels each other out. So I don't think, like, I think that, you know, in hindsight, like, what if I didn't walk that six miles a day? So I'm, I'm burning fewer calories, but I think my appetite would have been lower. So probably I could have still lost the weight, except the walking kept me in a good mood. It kept me going. It prevented me from stress eating because I would say to myself, well, I'm not going to stress eat because I still have steps to do. Like I need to go get my steps first. <laughs> so it was like not even an option because it's like I got steps, so I'll just go do those first. And, um... And so for me, it was really, really important to do the walking. But I think, again, that, that goes also back to I was an emotional eater, and that was a big part of why I was gaining weight, why I had, why I had gained weight, and, and why I found it hard to lose, I think, was because I would just, because I was always obeying my hunger while I was, you know, that stress was, man, I am, thank you. I went off with my 16-8 fast, and I can't afford to go without the evening tea. That tea with sugar. Please help me get back on track. I'm tracking my weight and I'm not losing nor gaining. Well, okay. Well, first of all, that's actually not a bad place to be because that shows you that, you know, you can maintain. Like with doing what you're doing, you can maintain right there. That's actually not bad because it sounds like you're not doing any fasting. Maybe? So, okay. So you went off your 16-8 and... Basically, what you're saying is you need your evening tea with sugar. And I get that. So, let's see. So, what I'm wondering is, why can't you just have the 16-8 and go ahead and have the tea with sugar? Like, 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 why can't that just be in your window? That's what I, let's see. I'll just keep looking at the camera. Okay. I'll, I'll be, I'll, I mean, I'm, I'm looking you'll, at the questions to, to make sure that I've... You'll need to, uh re-answer her tea thing, I believe. Okay, the tea thing. Maybe. Okay, all right. Do you think that that's what she was asking? Like, basically... I don't know if she was saying that she's off fasting altogether. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm trying. Okay, it looks like maybe 
It is back now. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that, you guys. I think what happened, if my husband's right, the my answer to Trina, I don't think anyone heard it. So, uh, so Trina, you asked about, uh, you went off your 16-8 fast, and you can't afford to go without the evening two with, sorry, tea with sugar. Uh, so please help me get back on track. I'm tracking my weight. I'm not losing nor gaining. And I said, it's not a bad place to be when you're not losing nor gaining. You're maintaining, which is, you know, like that's a skill you have to have once you get down to your goal weight is learning how to just be in, in you know, a range and keep that range. So that it's, it's good to be there. But, so it sounds like to me, and I'm sure, is it that... You were doing a 16-8, and then you had this cup of uh, tea with sugar outside the fasting window, sorry, outside the eating window, and then you just kind of said, well, I'm not doing the fasting right, so then you just quit on the whole thing. That That's what I got from it. If not, you can tell me, like, no, you misunderstood in the comments, and, and I will uh, change it, but uh, to, I'll change my answer based on your information. But if that's the case, if it's just really, it was like, I can't be perfect doing the 16-8 because I keep having this cup of tea with sugar in it outside of my eating window, I would say, just let that be your plan. You do a 16-8, and then during your fasting window, you allow yourself that cup of tea with the sugar. And look, there's no intermittent fasting police. I know people get so, so up in arms about things, but to me, it's like, you do it however you need to do it. However, you can negotiate with yourself. Like, for example, when I was starting out with intermittent fasting, my negotiation with myself was you can have your coffee how you like it, which back then it was uh, half and half and a tablespoon of sugar in it. And I would do like three cups a day during my fasting window. Um, I, and I still have cream, uh, sorry, like a half and half in my coffee uh, during the fasting window. I've done that this entire time. And I, mean, I slowly got rid of the sugar. That was only to make the fasting easier though. So my point is, like, I think you could have results. I think I, I, if, if the issue has just been like, you're afraid that by having that, that's gonna mess you up, I would say, don't worry about that. Just be consistent. Like, try that for six weeks. Do a 16-8. If that's what you wanna do, do a 16-8 and keep your cup of tea with sugar for you and see if you have results. Um, because really it's the fasting, the fasting overall that will get you to where you want to go because it's about you know eliminating calories and stuff i think i don't think there's any magic to it like having that little tiny break in your fast or whatever i really just don't think that it's as big of a deal as some people would make you think it is so uh, do basically write down your plan stick to it for six weeks and track your results uh green eyed uh says my daughter is on me for not eating enough also but you okay but i am obese okay so yeah, I, this to me, it's like, the results will bear that out. Like, if you're not eating enough, you're going to be miserable. Like, if, if you're actually not eating enough, uh, then you your body will let you know it. In, in, my, in my experience, like, there is a point where you, like, if you're not eating enough, you're going to have headaches and you're going to feel tired all the time. But if you're feeling good, I think that's a good indication that you are eating the right amount. And as long as, you know, in a good is like when you are obese, one pound a week, maybe two if you're very obese. And um, then what I found is as you get down to uh, a normal BMI, most people find that it's like a fraction of a pound a week, maybe a pound a week. Some lucky souls continue to, <laughs> to lose a pound a week. But for a lot of us, I mean, I've talked to a good number of people, it's like fractions of a pound a week once you start to get down to that amount. So um, I think what you can tell people though is, you know, like if, if you can reassure them honestly, look, I'm feeling great. You know, I'm, I'm being really careful. I'm tracking my weight. I'm, I am obese right now, you know, and being just really upfront. I mean, I, I know it's difficult to talk about those things depending on, you know, your relationships and stuff. But, um, you know, to me, you know, when I was going through all that stuff, I mean, I, I really kept it to myself. People didn't really know because I didn't share it with people. I just like thoughts on this. I didn't do an extended fast of like multiple days until I got down to a weight that I knew that's where I want to be. I don't want to be any lower than this. I'm happy where I'm at. Because I knew 
that kind of thing wasn't going to be sustainable for me. Multiple day fasts, it was like a shortcut. I could, I could tell that for, for me, it would be like a shortcut. And I, I kept thinking, I can't do that. I have to do the things sustainably. So, so in other words, to me, OMAD was a sustainable thing. Like it was, I can do this. I can do this around my family. This is something I can do for the rest of my life if necessary um, because it fits in with my life well. An extended fast does not, and so, but I, but I did want to do them. I did. I've done two five-day fasts, and they were like a year apart. Um, but here's what I found uh, with the, and I'm really glad I did it the way I did it because if I hadn't done it, uh, if I had tried to do like a five-day fast to lose those last ten pounds, which was very tempting, by the way. Sometimes it was like, oh man, because I knew like I could probably drop. 10 pounds if I just go on a five day fast because that is what generally happens to people. And, it, and I thought, hey, well, if I just get down real fast to the 10, you know, drop that last 10 real fast, I could probably maintain that. And so, you know, it's like a shortcut. But I was just really determined to not take a shortcut because I really wanted to prove to myself that I could do it in a sustainable way. So, um, but when I did the five day fast, uh, I've done two of them. I, I've done videos on them too, so I'm, I'm gonna go on my memory here, but I'm pretty sure on both of them, I lost like 11 pounds. Uh, and I regained that weight really quickly though after I broke the fast. So I think it was both times, I think it was within two weeks of the end of the fast, I was back to the weight that I started at, uh, or you know, within a pound or so. Um, what I noticed, for myself at least, was I feel like there's like this rebound effect, like this rebound, that's what I call it, um, where it's just like my appetite, man, once I break the fast, then the actual fast, really not hungry on it. I mean, it's like after the first day, it's just not, there's just not hunger there. But um, once I broke the fast and went back to just, okay, I'm back on you know my regular maintenance kind of plan, just like this incredible amount of hunger. And I really do think it's my body's way of saying, you lost weight too quickly, you need to get back up here. Cause your body doesn't like to lose weight really fast. Like it's trying to keep you alive for as long as possible, right? So, um, so I don't like multiple day fasts just to try to pull the weight off. Cause first of all, there is a lot of water weight that comes off and comes right back. Um, and look, even with my, like, I feel like I'm mentally in a really good place with my weight, I feel like, I'm really uh, mentally a lot better with the scale than I used to be. I used to be very afraid of the scale, very stressed out by the scale. I'm, I'm a lot better now, but it's hard. It is hard. Even when you're expecting the, the scale, I mean, cause I did it, you know, the first time I'm like, wow, that was really crazy to watch the scale rise by like 10 pounds in a couple of weeks. But then you would think that the second time it's like, okay, mentally prepared for that. It's not going to be a big deal. It's still like, oh man, it's like cringeworthy. Like, oh man, it comes back on so fast. So. I'm just saying I would just stick with what you can do in a sustainable way. Okay, so um, you, uh, Yvonne, you said, uh, oh, so basically you're worried about like not eating a fruit or salad, rice and bread and gravy and fried chicken and vegetable. Well, uh, I think, you know, again, you can, you can incorporate those things. It's kind of weird. I get it. Like, but I will do that. Like when I'm just eating OMAD, a lot of times I'll like, incorporate different weird foods that I wouldn't normally otherwise get. Um, and you can make it whatever you want it to be. I mean, you can have an apple with fried chicken and, you know, like a salad and whatever you want. Um, but I, I don't, I, I don't get as like with the whole nutrition thing, like what's healthy, what's not. I look at like the Amish people and what they eat and they're pretty healthy people and they eat a lot of stuff that we would call unhealthy and they're just not, they're not obese uh, by and large. And, uh, they have pretty good longevity. So I mean, okay, well maybe there's some stuff we don't really know. They're very active and they eat a lot of homemade foods. So, uh, uh Bagawathi said how to break intermittent, fa in intermittent fasting. I just eat whatever I've, uh, even on my five day fast, I broke it like with a cheese plate the first time cheese, there was like a cheese plate with like meat and cheese and everything, bread, peanut butter and M&Ms, I think, uh, this last time I broke it with a plate of spaghetti. So, so not what people will tell you. Like people are like, oh, you gotta ease back into it with some bone broth. Never had bone broth in my life. That's just not me. So uh, I would say just whatever you want, especially on OMAD. I just 
you know, whatever I'm eating that day, that's what I break it with. Uh, Carmen, I thought I could never do six miles. I was more like one mile on good days. Last night, uh, when going to bed, my pedometer read 14,026 steps. It was not hard at all. It's doable and enjoyable. I agree. It, it is crazy, like, how your perspective can shift. Like, if you just do it one day, it's like, oh, wow, that was not hard. Like, once I did all of my steps inside one day, it was like, wow, I did six miles in my house. Like, I could always do six miles in my house. It's, like, a very doable thing. And I would, like, break my personal best. Like, that was one thing I did in 2016. I would beat my personal best for steps. And that really uh, made the, the six miles a day seem really, really doable. Because like there would be some days where I'd do a lot more than that. Like I think I got up to like 30,000 steps in a day that year. Like That was my personal best. And then in 2018, 2017, 2018, I can't remember what year that was, uh, the 100,000 steps. I was like, wow, I can do a lot of steps, a lot more than I think I can. So, uh, Okay, well, uh, and congratulations, Tiffany, you've lost uh, 15 um, pounds. That's great. Okay, so um, and lastly, Ronan, you said if you start each meal with a large healthy salad, it prevents you from overeating during your window. Yeah, and I think that's a, a like, there's lots of little things you can do like that. Like, uh, if you just start with a big, you know, like lots of greens and stuff like that. Uh, for me, some things that helped for not overeating instituting a rule of no screens like so in other words no tv no phones at the table when i'm eating i'm focused on the eating when i'm watching tv i'm focused on watching tv like whatever i'm doing that's what i'm doing and learning how to not distract myself when i'm eating uh, has been really helpful also to pay attention to where my mind is uh, while i'm eating because sometimes what i've noticed is like even if i'm sitting there no screen I can still be like thinking through all these things in my head and kind of shoveling it in. So trying to be very present with the meal, uh, whatever it is. So, okay, well, you guys, this hour has flown by as it always does. Thank you for joining me. I hope it was helpful. Uh, and I will see you guys the next time I do one of these lives. I clicked end stream, so we'll see. <laughs> okay, thanks. How much of that stays. Uh-huh. Since it's not yet responded. It's not yet responding. There's a possibility.